Hi, I'm Hany William, Sales and Marketing Manager at Trelleborg Marine Systems Melbourne. I specialize in our docking and mooring product area. This webinar follows on from a recent briefing document issued by Trelleborg regarding industry practices in the specification and selection of docking and mooring systems. The briefing discussed the issue of low quality mooring systems and explored why product quality is so important in reducing risk in the port environment. It highlighted necessary regulations and standards requirements for docking and mooring systems and how to ensure quality through compliance. You can download the briefing document at the link below. This webinar is intended to take you a bit further than the available standards and regulations and to give you a deeper insight into the best practice methodologies that suppliers should provide in order to guarantee that the solution you receive is fit for purpose, designed to specification and constructed using the materials that were tested. Trelleborg goes above and beyond many compliance requirements to ensure that the very best quality and most safe products reach our customers. In this webinar, I'll discuss some of the ways in which we do this. There are a number of aspects to consider, so let's get started. Once a mooring analysis study has been conducted for a new jetty and the capacity and quantity of the mooring fittings have been determined, the selection process starts. The first step is to determine the following design requirements. Design life, design philosophy, design codes. It is preferred that the design life of the embedded items matches the infrastructure design life, while the mooring equipment design life can be equal or less. A typical design life is 25 to 30 years. The main elements that affect the mooring fitting life are the dynamic loading and the corrosion allowance, which must be specified to the supplier in order to benchmark the design criteria. The magnitude of load variation and expected cycling loading are jetty specific as they depend on the jetty occupancy and the environmental conditions. Trelleborg adopts a fully cast weld free design that offers superior qualities in terms of fatigue resistance and extended design life. When it comes to design philosophy, it is important to understand the requirements and recommendations of different standards and regulatory bodies. The British standard BS6349 for the design of fendering and mooring systems specifies that the mooring point should be designed to its rated capacity, which is normally equal to the minimum breaking load of the mooring line. In this context, each quick release hook is considered a mooring point even if it is mounted with others on the same base. The standard specifies the design load for multiple hook units to 2.1, 2.8 and 3.5 for double, triple and quadruple hook unit respectively in exposed environments. The American Marine Oil Terminals Engineering and Maintenance Standard Motems specify that each hook is designed to withstand the full MBL of the mooring line with a safety factor of 1.2. For multiple hooks mounted on one base, the standard requires that the anchor bolts are designed to 1.2 times the MBL times 1 plus 0.75 times N minus 1 where N is the number of hooks on the assembly. OCIMF guidelines specify that the design basis load, DBL, for each mooring fitting is designed to the MBL of the mooring line. Permanent deformation should be avoided by limiting the DBL to 85% of the specified minimum yield of the material. It also highlights the variance in the definition of MBL definition between various standards. In the IMO guidance on shipboard towing and mooring equipment, mooring fittings shall be designed to 1.25 of the mooring line MBL. 
other aspects of the fitting shall be designed to industry standards. Trelleborg adopts an encompassing design philosophy that complies with the requirements of all standards and industry regulatory bodies and sets the norm for design steps that are not covered in the standard. Most of the design standards and guidelines mentioned earlier require only one mooring line to be attached to each mooring point. In practice, this is usually not the case, and there is a high risk where the rope sits high on the hook nose, thus applying higher loads on the equipment than its intended design loads. To address this real risk, Trellowork specifies the safe working load of the hook to be equal to the MBL of the mooring line and the design load of the hook to be 1.5 times the safe working load. In case of multiple hooks on one unit, the base structure is designed to the worst loading condition. Again, most of the design standards and guidelines do not address this requirement. However, we know from experience that one loading condition can apply twice the stress that another load condition applies on the support structure. The buyer must question how the mooring equipment supplier addresses this part of the design. Anchor bolts are designed in accordance with engineering standards for steel construction which requires a safety factor of 1.5 to be applied on the design load at the worst loading condition. In our opinion, this is overly conservative and may be reduced if necessary depending on the foundation strength. However, it has to be higher than 1 in order to comply with the failure sequence recommended in OCIMF and PN guidelines. A hook profile with adequate radius will prolong the life of the hoser to its full potential and eliminate premature snapping of lines due to an extreme bending radius on the hook profile. An adequate rake angle will prevent lines from slipping at high angles, especially at high tides or when mooring big vessels. Trelleborg design eliminates any protruding parts from inside the hook or on the side to protect against inadvertent release that may be caused by the mooring rope or any other object. The installation method is especially important. There are two installation options for the quick release hook unit according to the industry best practice. Recessed installation, surface mounted installation. Recessed installation is the preferred installation method and relies on the use of anchor bolts to sustain the tensile loading and shear keys to sustain the shear and torsional loading. The gap between the bottom surface of the base plate and the concrete surface is filled with grout. The tightening torque required for the bolts is not high and can be achieved with manual tools. While this method is slightly more difficult initially, it achieves the best results. Alternatively, the quick release hook unit can be surface mounted on top of the concrete or steel deck surface. This method is easier at installation, but to be executed correctly, a friction connection must be achieved between the base plate and the deck surface. The tightening torque has to be high enough to achieve this connection type. Incorrect installation of the quick release hook unit can lead to catastrophic failure. The most common aspect of failure is slippage of the base plate. This leads to incorrect loading of the anchor bolts by introducing a bending moment that the bolt is not designed to sustain in addition to the direct tension and shear already applied to it. If this is not rectified quickly, it can lead to failure of all anchor bolts. The installation and the cathodic insulation of the quick release hook unit are intertwined topics that must be both addressed. Hooks and capstans should be insulated from the base as opposed to using under the base insulation pads which are susceptible to cracking due to movement under load over a period of time. The main reason to insulate the quick release hook unit is for cathodic protection to avoid accelerated corrosion of different components due to current coming from the ship through the mooring line to the quick release hook unit.
A small current may also be generated from earth leakage from the capstan. It is common practice to specify insulation at the anchor bolts as shown in the sketch on screen. However, this is a bad practice. Especially when coupled with a surface mounted installation, it can cause both to fail. To achieve a friction connection, a high tightening torque is required. This increases the pressure on the surface of the insulation washer, which is usually from a non-metallic material, causing a crack in the washer and a failure in the insulation. This in turn causes an installation failure and the base to slip. At Trelleborg, we apply a unique methodology in which insulation is located at the hook and the capstan mounting points. This frees up the anchor bolts for a correct installation, whether it is recessed or surface mounted. The second sketch on screen shows the insulation locations for our quick release hook units. Trelleborg quick release hooks are also fully cast rather than welded. This offers a number of benefits. Fully cast products offer superior resistance to both dynamic and perpendicular loading when compared to fabricated quick release hooks and support structures. Let's start with dynamic loading. A mooring fitting and its support structure are subject to dynamic loading cycles due to environmental conditions and passing ship effects. While this dynamic loading may be within the nominal yield capacity of the material, it presents a high risk of failure due to fatigue, especially in fabricated components with welded load-bearing connections. Impact should be assessed against multiple parameters, which are currently listed on screen. To avoid this fatigue risk, our quick-release hooks and support structures are fully cast and free from welded joints. Our design and manufacturing process pays specific attention to highly stressed spots, improving fatigue resistance and leading to extended product life, ultimately producing a better investment. As well as dynamic loading, mooring fittings are subject to perpendicular loading across many components, especially at the base plate and the clevis holding the quick release hook. Rolled plates are not the ideal solution to sustain perpendicular loading. The rolling process as shown on screen causes elongation of the grain resulting in orthotropic properties of the steel plates which makes them less able to sustain load in the direction perpendicular to the grain structure. When loaded perpendicularly, welded plates may exhibit cracks parallel to the grain direction called lamellar tear. Steel plates typically have their properties specified in X or Y directions or both, but properties in the Z direction are not specified. This can only be done when special manufacturing techniques are used to produce what is called a Z-quality plate. On the contrary, a cast material is isotropic. It can sustain load equally in all directions. This is one of the main reasons we use cast material for our standard products. As highlighted in the issues briefing, full material traceability is important in order to guarantee accountability and best practice manufacturing methods. Trelleborg goes above and beyond the requirements of international standards, codes and industry practices. Major structural components such as hooks and bases include a built-in test sample that is extracted from the finished product and is available to our customer for testing purposes. To ensure full traceability, we ensure that one of our own employees or an internationally recognized third party, such as Lloyd's, is available to witness the cutting of test samples. This enables us to guarantee that our material test results reflect exactly what is in the final product. As well as ensuring ISO 9001 certification, the buyer should always obtain material certificate type 3.2 according to EN 10204, which is witnessed by an authorized independent body.
All Trelleborg's docking and mooring systems go through full material and full-scale testing before the product is supplied to the customer. In fact, a full docking and mooring system will go through 72 tests and checkpoints before it is delivered to our customer to ensure its integrity and correct functionality. Material Integrity To ensure the integrity of the material produced, the following tests are put in place. Non-destructive testing of 100% of cast components, magnetic particle inspection for the detection of surface cracks, ultrasonic testing to detect internal cracks and porosities, random radiographic testing for a full scan on selected batches. For 100% of the quick-release hooks produced, the following tests are carried out. Proof load testing of 100% of assembled hooks to 150% of its safe working load three times. Upon completion of the mooring analysis study, design life, design philosophy, and relevant design codes should all be determined. Consider the need for additional operational and safety processes and safeguards, which may go further than the required standards. Ask your supplier for recessed installation if this is not possible, surface-mounted installation should be considered but must be executed correctly. Hooks and capstans should be insulated from the base rather than using under-the-base insulation pads. Quick-release hooks should be fully cast rather than welded to improve resistance to dynamic and perpendicular loading. Full material traceability is critical to ensure accountability and best practice manufacturing methods. Ask to see full evidence of your supplier's testing procedure. Trelleborg has developed a docking and mooring specification clause for specifiers to use to ensure traceability. Compliance and quality are built into the docking and mooring systems they specify. Highlighting and providing practical guidance on the most important details discussed in this webinar, it is easy to edit, free to use and available at the link below.